The middle ear is a small but extremely important space occupied by the three smallest bones in your body, and they're known as the ossicles. Individually, they're the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The acicular chain of these three bones provides a means for the transmission of acoustic energy impinging on the tympanic membrane to the inner ear. Here's a picture of the malleus embedded in the tympanic membrane, the incus and the stapes, the three smallest bones in your body. The malleus is the largest of the ossicles. It's a point of attachment to the tympanic membrane. The handle or the manubrium of the malleus is a long process. And the bulk of the malleus is the point of the articulation with the incus. The incus is the middle bone in the ossicular chain. It articulates with the malleus and through a saddle joint. The two of them move as like one unit. The stapes is the third bone, the last bone. The head of the stapes articulates with the plenticular process of the incus. The footplate, or the base of the stapes, rests in the oval window of the temporal bone at the base of the cochlea. It's held in place by an annular ligament, and the articulation of the incus and the stapes is a ball and socket type joint. And there they are again, very tiny bones in your body, but very important for hearing. The tympanic muscles so there are two muscles in your middle ear, and again, they're the tiniest in your body. There's the stapedius muscle and the tensor tympani muscle. The stapedius muscle is approximately 6 millimeters in length, or 55 millimeters squared in cross-sectional area. It's embedded in the bone posterior to the middle ear wall. When it contracts, the stapes is rotated, and the innervation is provided by the facial nerve. The tensor tympani muscle is also very small. It's arising from the anterior wall of the middle ear space to the eustachian tube. Its contraction pulls the tympanic membrane inward. Both muscles stiffen the middle ear transmission thereby reducing the transmission of acoustic information from lower frequencies. Contraction of these muscles reduces the strength of the signals reaching the ear. They might protect damage from high, high sounds, high intensity sounds, but they really provide little protection. On the medial wall, you have the oval window where the footplate of the stapes is embedded. Below that point, you have the round window, and in between the two is a bone called the promontory. Immediately above the oval window, you have the prominence of the lateral semicircular canals of the vestibular system. On the anterior wall, you have the start of the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube connects your middle ear with your nasal pharynx, and that's why you see an ear, nose, and throat doctor. It's all connected, your ear, nose, and your throat through the eustachian tube. The eustachian tube is important for keeping the middle ear space aerated and for maintaining equilibrium between the middle ear, air in the middle ear, and the air in the atmosphere. It's on an angle. The mastoid air cells make up the mastoid process. An infection of the middle ear space may result in infection in these air cells. So you see the bone that the middle ear is housed in is honeycombed. Those are the mastoid air cells.